what is up everybody it's Vin Diesel here we're gonna be tying up a straggle caddis this is a caddis pattern that we're gonna be using a product by from uh, Simperfly fly tying their straggle string um, first we're gonna start here with the dry fly hook this is a stealth hook in a size 14 make sure it's nice and secure in the vise I typically fish these in sometimes 12s but usually 14s to 18s we've got some Semperfly this is their uh, 12 aught uh, classic wax thread. I'm going to go ahead and start my thread right here with a little bit of gap between the hook eye and where my thread begins and then I'll work my way about uh, halfway down the shank and what we're doing here is we're starting to build the taper of the fly right off the bat. So go ahead and trim out your tag in and then what we're going to do is we're going to be using this uh, straggle string. They now have three different lengths and this is the um, <clears throat> olive this is kind of a like uh, a little bit more of a lighter olive and of course we've got kind of a golden olive here. These are some of my favorite uh, pattern or colors to tie these uh, straggle caddis in and it's super effective. It's got a little bit of flash. It's super durable. Got a really nice cord um, core of the material and so I'll go ahead and tie that in with the tag going towards the eye and then I'll just pull it all back and see I've got about two eye lengths there. Um, before the taper, you know, before the material um, was secured down and I'll wrap back towards the point and then I'll advance my thread back up and try and just to have a really, really clean underbody and then we'll end our thread right here, right in that uh, gap we created in the beginning, that spacing. Now I like to tie my straggle string backwards first. This provides uh, a really good foundation to the uh, taper of the fly and so I'll go a little bit into the bend I'll do one more than you'd think you would and then I'll just kind of crease all those fibers back and then I'll kind of wrap back over and jump back up to the thread and that way we've got a really really nice kind of uh, shut coming out the back and then I'll just palmer these around you could orient each fiber going backwards but in all reality all I do is just the buggier the better so I uh, just kind of palmer it up with touching wraps and just trying to keep it nice and uniform. And then I want to make sure I end this with that uh, that same hook eye uh, gap right there because we're going to be securing in a few more, few more materials. And I'll go ahead and uh, close that with a wrap behind and then about three or four in front of the hook. And kind of ramp it up. Uh, the cleaner this uh, head is, the easier it is for the remainder of the fly. And then we'll just cut out the excess there. If you have any trap, uh, you know, little straggle fibers that are in your way of your eye uh, I'd remove them at this point kind of get your scissors in there they sell a few tools like cauterizing tools you could heat up a bodkin and just kind of melt them away um, it is a synthetic but uh, you know getting them back is kind of a uh, the, you know the cleaner you can make it at this point the easier it is it's going to be to tie on you know, on the river so we're going to be using some uh, CDC. This is a bulk pack from Montana Fly it's a light pink and uh, all we really need out of here are two um, feathers. They don't have to be cream of the crop or super, super pretty. I'm just going to grab two random ones that have a little bit of length and making sure it does, you know, it's not like a, you know, a screwed up one. They're, they're all pretty good though, but I'll orient them so they're both concaving the same direction and I'll kind of just pinch it in between my fingers and pull it towards the tip. That way we've got a nice little tie in point right there. I'll pinch it in my left hand, do two securing wraps over the top. And then you can adjust the length. Um, and I want it to be a little bit longer than the, the hook bend. And then we'll just go ahead and tie that off with about three more wraps. And then to make sure those fibers all stay in, I like to kind of fold that CDC over itself. And then with a nice jumping wrap backwards, I'll secure it. So we have a little bit of a hump there. Um, you know, you could eliminate that, but I don't think it really, really matters that much, especially with the wing we're going to be tying on. And then I don't trim these stems flush down by my thread. I'm going to leave a little bit to support the, uh, the overwing or the wing of the fly uh, for this, uh, this caddis. And so that is the foundation of our fly, basically. You could probably fish it as is, but we're going to be using some of this nature spirit. This is the Select Cow Elk um, patch. Uh, really, really nice. I've used these for a bunch of different flies. The key I find is uh, it's nice to lay it down on a surface and then cut out an appropriate clump for this. I'm using roughly 23 uh, hairs. If you like to have a heavier wing, you could go up to 30. And I'm just throwing out random hairs. I don't actually count. I just grab a clump and this maybe feels like, um, I don't know, a, a, a bodkin handle maybe. Um, 
and then I'll go ahead and throw it in my stacker. This is a small stacker. Give it a few tap, tap, taps. I don't really go for a perfect orientation on the wing, but that did stack really nice. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to have it line up um, right here on the top, and I'm going to have it just so it's a little bit shorter than my CDC. And then what we'll do is I'll do about three wraps over the top before I do a nice secure pull down and flare those elk hair. And I'm just going to flare it a little bit. And don't let go of the clump on your left hand um, for your first couple. I kind of pinch it, and then I'm going to keep all those fibers on top. Notice how I'm pinching the initial um, hairs coming off the back, and then I'm going to grab about, uh, divide it into quarters or thirds and secure some of that elk hair as we work our way down. That way it's secured in multiple locations and pinched wrapped, and then I'll just build up a nice little uh, uh, support for the head. And I like to use this green color. You can use red, you could use orange, you could um, not even use white thread in the beginning. You could you know, use whatever color you want, but this green seems to have a little pop color to it. And so I'm just gonna cover up my thread wraps I did here so that it's nice and green. We're gonna be covering this in a little bit of UV resin in a minute. And then I pull the, the butt ends down. And then before you cut those, I like to have my thread up and over the top here with about two loose wraps and then just kind of let it dangle. And at this point, I like to cut it. I'm just going to pinch them in an oval and go ahead and trim it. Um, don't mess with it more than one or two little, you know, trim cuts there because the more you mess with it, the harder it is going to be to get it to look good like a nice head of a caddis. So um, play around with your fibers. Make sure they're, you know, mostly on the top side of the shank. If you have a few hanging down, that's okay. As it sits in the water, it should be perfect. And then we'll go ahead and do a three-turn whip finish, and I like to do mine right over the head there and end with my thread on the bottom. Uh, that's kind of a key because the way we resin this, uh, that's going to be you know securing the fly uh, and the thread in the whip finish. So uh, just kind of play with it. Make sure it looks the way you want, and this is looking pretty good as is. If you want more of a flare like a triangle shape, go ahead and use your thumb and push up and under and have them go up. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm using Bone Dry. This is their Solares, and I'm just going to put a pretty heavy glob there on top. And I'm going to work it around to the sides. This is going to seep into those elk hair. And then this is why I wanted the thread on the bottom there, because I'm going to just lay down a nice little coat right there and make it a nice little, I, don't, I, I wouldn't call it a hot spot, but it definitely has a little bit of pop in the water and uh, make it nice and secure. And that's going to uh, uh, absorb into the thread and make this really, really nice and really, really durable uh, because this is just going to slay the fish. So uh, that's the way I resin this. And then I just give it a little cure, and uh, that's pretty much the uh, straggle caddis. The advantage to this is um, you can use deer hair, elk hair. Uh, you can switch up the color of the CDC. You can switch up the colors of the straggle, uh, pretty much match the time of year you're fishing these. Um, try something new and it, it catches fish. So it's one of my most uh, favorite patterns to fish in the evening. Tie some up, uh, add them to your box. Thanks for watching and make sure to click subscribe below.